Allow me to read you a paragraph from a, uh, a Nature News article uh, published two days ago that um, if you haven't run into it, you both won't be surprised and will be further horrified at what the conversation sounds like. So here we go, Zach. This is called Divisive COVID Lab Leak Debate Prompts Dire Warnings from Researchers. Allegations that COVID escaped from a Chinese lab make it harder for nations to collaborate on ending the pandemic and fuel online bullying, some scientists say. Um, here we go. Calls to investigate Chinese laboratories have reached a fever pitch in the United States, as Republican leaders allege the coronavirus causing the pandemic was leaked from one, and as some scientists argue that this lab leak hypothesis requires a thorough independent inquiry. But for many researchers, the tone of the growing demands is unsettling. They say the volatility of the debate could thwart efforts to study the virus's origins. Who is creating the volatility here? <laughs> this, yeah. I mean, they, they, this article and the, all of the others like it, but this is actually in Nature. This is in one of the top two science journals in the world, is saying that those people who actually want a full slate of hypotheses on the table are responsible not just for what political thing might happen if this is discussed, but the tone of the argument. And it didn't need to be an argument at all. Those of us who were saying from the beginning, hey, hypothesis, why are we only being told one thing that we're allowed to consider doesn't sound like science to us. It is our persistence and is the tenacity of those actual scientists who discovered things like the fur and, fur and cleavage for in cleavage site and such, who are, have kept this alive. And, you know, yeah, are people bedraggled at times and sometimes irate and, you know, irritated? Of course. And that's not on us or the scientists who are doing the work or the few journalists who are becoming more and more common now who are saying, wait a minute, we better talk about this. The tone of the conversation is our fault. That's yeah. amazing. You're right. It's a complete reversal. Yeah. I mean, you know, and so many of these things are just you know, they're like true to the negative one, right? Yeah. They're the inverse. I got, I, I got one more pair. I mean, there's plenty in here from the same article. Others worry that the rhetoric around an alleged lab leak has grown so toxic that it's fueling online bullying of scientists and anti-Asian harassment in the United States, as well as offending researchers and authorities in China whose cooperation is needed. So A, we have um, your, even if you're not racist for considering it, you're creating racism. And you don't want to offend the people who might have done it. Yeah. And in right. fact- Really? That's the standard that we're going to be held to? Apparently, that's the new standard. Um, but it occurs to me, you know, we we talked about this several live streams ago where we were looking at the Barrick, the paper that Barrick uh, is a co-author of with mm -hmm. uh, Alina Chan and others. Yes. Um, and- I, I was of the, of the opinion that they were creating- they were revealing a rationalization that had allowed people who absolutely knew better the whole time to lie about what they knew, which was that they were protecting their Asian colleagues from anti-Asian sentiment. And mm -hmm. so I think this is the construction of the fallback buzzsaw here. The initial buzzsaw was, you're a conspiracy theorist. And after shouting that at us for more than a year, then the point is, well, if you're going to insist on you know actually continuing down this road now that we've cried uncle now you're putting asians in danger right and i would say all right if we're worried about that surely we should take a look at ivermectin right <laughs> discovered by an asian right <laughs> Wouldn't it be marvelous if this came down to the fact that this wasn't really about being an Asian or not being an Asian? Yes, some Asians uh, in the CCP seem to have at the very least covered up something about the initiation of this pandemic. But it is also true that an Asian discovered this marvelous, quite safe drug that works on so many things. Not only was the person who did the discovery Asian, and God, how I hate that we're having this conversation. Absolutely. But where was it discovered? Ivermectin itself is... In Japanese soil, in, right? Oh, like, goodness. <laughs> so, I mean, this is completely insane. We are now going to invoke racism because the thing itself may have been created in, like, in, in a particular space. This is upside down world. There, there, there is nothing that is coherent about these arguments, and this, frankly. People don't like it when we swear, but <laughs> some people do. But well, this, they're going to learn to fucking put up with it. <laughs> this article is a uh, scientific malpractice. 
It is. It's And it's Nature News. It's not pretending to be a research article, but the news section of Nature is supposed to be the the pinnacle of science journalism. And what we have here is people who are claiming the mantle of science journalism, and I believe this person writing this actually has a PhD in a science, who clearly don't know how science operates, what a hypothesis is, why you need to actually include all of the hypotheses when you're trying to figure out what something is, and why you cannot let your politics decide what questions, what possible explanations for a problem that we are now living, all living downstream of, can be uh, can be considered. We have to consider all of them. Right. And, you know, for it to be nature also, which published that appalling uh, Christian Anderson uh, natural origins argument in which uh, experts in the field preposterously claimed that there's no way that we just simply didn't know enough to make a virus like this, mm -hmm. which is, you know, in one way true. We wouldn't have known enough to design its spike protein, but it doesn't, you know, these people obviously knew about serial passaging. Right, they knew about the ability to to um, hybridize two two sequences, so you know it, it was effectively a lie. But um, yeah, so the long and short of it is, there are all of these techniques. They involve punishing those who stand up at the point in the rare case where uh, we win a battle like has now happened with the lab leak hypothesis, they don't stop punishing you. They don't admit that they were wrong, that you were right. They don't do any of those things. They then go on to immediately setting up the next buzz saw, saw and uh, threatening you with new stigmas. And um, it is absolutely appalling. Yes. Uh, I'm going to read one the final paragraph from here because I think that it sort of it wraps it up nicely. I'm just trying to figure out who the person that is mentioned in this final paragraph is Fiddler, and I'm, I'm just not seeing it. So I'm just going to read it as is with no explanation for who this final person um, <clears throat> being quoted is. Uh, again, from this Nature News article published on May 27th. So with a pressing need for biosecurity policies, Fiddler thinks the United States should focus on fostering pandemic diplomacy through meetings between U.S. and Chinese ambassador, as happened with climate change discussions in April. Quote, don't we actually have some things we need to do to get ready for the next pandemic, given the debacle of this one? That presumes that the origins of this virus have nothing to teach us about how this pandemic has unfurled. And if anyone is posing as either a scientist or a science journalist who actually thinks that if this is a wild type virus versus a virus that experienced gain of function research in the lab has no implications for how it is acting out in the world, anyone who thinks that that has no implications has no business in this space. It is, this is like evolution 101, right? And okay, you know, we're, we're being told to stay in our lane and we're saying, you know what, it's all evolutionary, all of this, and no, we're not specialists in any number of these fields, but it's evolutionary. If virologists can't do basic evolutionary thinking to understand that if you have enhanced selective forces on a virus and then it has escaped as opposed to it's a wild type virus that somehow was immediately able to jump both to humans and between humans really well, rather um, to humans, between humans, and within tissues in humans, that is a very different different situation. Yes, we need to avoid the next pandemic, but one of the steps in doing that is to understand what this pandemic is. Yeah, what it is. And, you know, we just simply have a right. If this came from the lab, we have a right to know what were the protocols, what creatures, tissues, etc., were used to generate it. Was it ferrets? Was it humanized mice? Was it uh, airway tissue? W what was it? And, mm -hmm. you know, those things might not give us any tools, but all of those who are so sure that this is strictly about the next pandemic are really... Um, you know, covering their asses. That's, that's what that's they're doing. What, that's what they're doing. That is what they're doing.